And maybe we are all curious about, some of us are curious about your experience. Um, did, did you workshop this book? Like, what was the journey from, like, beginning until now? And, uh, you know, what was that, what was, what, how did your workshop respond to bits of this that you had worked on? And, <laughs> et cetera. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I don't know if anyone here is thinking of getting an MFA, um, and but I would recommend it with conditions. You know, like, um, uh, ultimately, like in that question, can you teach writing or can't you teach writing, I come down on the side <laughs> of you can't really teach writing, but you can um, expand your mind, you know, get some other voices that are not your own, um, seeing your piece from a new perspective. And like for the ones that are most important to me, the classmates that I was closest to or her mo who were most different from me, but also um, had my admiration to such a great extent, like I feel like they sit on my shoulders, like little consciences, like telling me like, like you have a tendency not to clarify conflict, like just clarify it and, and um, push yourself to that direction because you will never make it overblown, even though that's your wor what you're worried about, right? So like um, people who can, uh, you know, force you to break a habit that comes most naturally to you, but is not a habit you consciously want to carry with you. Um, and uh, with this book, I think that um, I got some really great feedback. I put people through lots of chapters. I felt like I was Charles Dickens writing like one chapter at a time and then like, here, this is hot off the press. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, <I've since> heard. <laughs> yeah, and it was a little hard to like um, improve it while I was writing it, but I saved every workshop critique. I have like um, a foot or, or something of workshop <laughs> critiques. Um, and uh, when I graduated, I took them with me to a residency, and I just like digested them. Yeah, <laughs> just the letters at the back of the packet. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I had this very foolish idea when I when I went to get my MFA. I chose BU because Hudgen was there and because it was one year long. And I'm like, I took this efficient <laughs> approach to writing a novel. I'm like, whatever, one year in and out. I'm gonna have a book deal by the end. And that was almost a decade ago. Um, <laughs> And I've been working on this thing almost every day since. I mean, well, a couple of dark, yeah, months where I took time off. But, um, but it just, um, I, I had a great experience because I studied with someone I, I so admired. And, um, and I took a lot of workshops before that. You know, you, you do them here and there where you can. I was working full time. Um, I was working in publishing, actually. And, um, and Hajin was just so different from these, these other professors. He's like, you know, you will create an outline of your book. You shall have, you know, 20, 20 scenes per part. You know, you will know the ending before the beginning. These two families, the Beth Mazer, the Mazer family and the, the uncle's family need to meet. Perhaps the cousin can have an affair with Ed, you know, or, or like Ed and Sang could go into business together, but you must have. So it was, it was actually very ref refreshingly prescriptive because before that, the creative writing experience I had was either reading, you know, really bad manuscripts that we were going to publish anyway, or um, or just taking these workshops where people are like, oh, well, you know, I mean, go with that if you feel like it, but if you don't, don't go with that. Um, so it was very unhelpful. Um, so I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I came in, um, in my one year, um, my thesis project was this, um, which... You know, Hajin was my thesis advisor. And then all the stuff that he said over the many years that happened, I was like peddling the wrong ending for a couple of years. And I'm like, why, why am I doing this? And, and then I had a conversation with him. I'm like, his name is Shufei Hajin is, uh, is his uh, pen name. And I'm like, why do I have to have the, why does the cousin need to have an affair? I, I don't understand. He's like, oh, no, I, I mean, I was just saying that you need to get these to link these two storylines because then otherwise it just feels like a, an unfinished, open kind of, narrative that doesn't have closure and I'm like oh and then so instead I put I threw two other characters together in a way that felt a little more you know but that was two years of my life I won't get back but anyway um but yeah these are this is writing right like you go down all those dark alleys just to know that hey crossing that off the list I'm not gonna write about that after I've already written about it and you know oh ends up on the cutting room floor <laughs> anyway you guys had like a very interactive relationship for about 10 years 
more like I would pester him with yeah. that. Because <laughs> uh-huh. he's so, you know, he served in like the people's army, so you can't, you never know. Like, I'm always, I you know, right? He, from the age of 14 to 18, so you're like, wow, you're, and, and because he, um, he, he's so deadpan all the time, so I'm always like, hey, hey, you know, like doing my normal, whatever, the song and dance, and he's like, and I, I don't know. I, but the, and then he does a polite smile, and I'm like, are you humoring me, or did that really touch you in some way? <laughs> so um, that was the extent of our relation. We weren't like besties, like yeah. we weren't going shopping together or any of that, but, um, but yeah, he was a huge mentor to me. Alex, did you go shopping with your advisors? No. No. <laughs> Were they s- suggesting plot twists? Um, the most helpful thing I ever got um, in workshop was from Ben Marcus, mm-hmm. and um, it's still the hardest advice to follow. I think, and I don't think I have actually followed it, but he <laughs> he would take a novel or a short story, and he would say like. Um, I can see what you're working up to with this. Um, I can see how you're, you know, using all your craft techniques to bring us to this place that you've already imagined. But you already know where that place is, and how much better would it be if you put that place right at the beginning and find out what happened afterwards, which of course would be the best thing. <laughs> so now that's what I try to do over and over again. Um, but like, uh, someday I'll get it, yeah. and then I will like do a dance that is really difficult that is really difficult oh my gosh um and then were people in your workshop i did you guys read that jenny zhang essay about um her experience at iowa after the whole Ethan cho i'm just gonna say Ethan cho now because is that how you pronounce it because i liked what you said about a piece of stink i felt bad because i didn't know it was a real person oh it's okay it's all right (laughs) i still well okay well um so yeah, her experience at Iowa was really, um, it was really, uh, uh, people are always saying, and I think we've talked a little bit about this too, like th- no Asian character would sound like this, or, or no Asian, like d- does your mom really talk like this? Or um, uh, So she was always having to modify, um, you know, according to workshop comments like that. Did you guys get comments like that in your workshop? No, I'm so glad no one <laughs> said to me the sorts of things I said to her. Like, it, it was really, um, that was a wonderful essay and also really difficult to read, mm. right, too. And, like, um, maybe the thing that makes me most unhappy about this Best American Poetry thing is that, like, um, for whoever just wants to skim the story, they'll be able to, like, pull out the conclusion, oh, yeah, you do better if you use an Asian name or something. Like, Asians have an advantage. And um, it's the wrong message to take, right? I think um, I appreciated Sherman Alexie's sort of response, but uh, I think we need more responses. We need more essays like Jenny's, and we need more um, uh, communiques from within the workshop with people sharing their experiences and talking about like um, what sort of what sort of advantages other people believe they're being afforded and what sort of actual challenges they encounter in their career. Right. Um, we, have, we have a collection of responses on the website now, right? Yeah, so um, anyone who's curious to read more from real Asian poets, they're on the website. <laughs> um, did, and so d- did you have... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, my program was only nine people and we moved as a cohort. So within our group, it was quite a, it was quite a diverse range. Um, uh, so, not within the students, but there was this one crotchety old writer, professor, who I shall leave unnamed, um, and he would, he'd read my stories, um, and he'd say, oh, you know, your characters sound really assimilated, or something like that, um, because I guess they, I didn't, I, I think I was, I was so in shock, or I was trying to translate what he meant, because I'm like, assimil, like, that, uh, that I didn't even think to like get up on my soapbox and be like, "Who do you think you are?" Um, because I, because they were, they had, they were characters that happened to be, you know, Asian American, and they were just speaking normal dialogue. But um, maybe it wasn't exciting enough, or I, I don't know what. But I ran into him um, just a couple of years ago, and I had just come back from uh, from my. Uh, research uh, in Korea, and he's like, oh, how is it going back to Korea? And this is a mistake in, in semantics that I would do a lot, like, oh, y- 
even though I was born here, like going back, going when I was leaving for Korea, I'm like, oh, I'm going back to back to Korea. Even like I'm going back to the motherland. And then you show up, and they're like, who are you? You're you're a you know what are you're a Taemikyopo Isade from you know you're a, you're a whatever ethnic Korean American who's not even from here and a foreigner on top of that so so that sent me the message like oh you're not from here but yeah you have these characters and and sometimes sadly they occupy like the upper rungs of academia mm-hmm. who are still kind of clinging to this idea like oh you're you're from there um, we went we got into an argument then because then I did get up on a soapbox and then he's like no 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 but you have family there right I'm like all my family lives in Queens and Long Island. And he's like, yeah, but still, because of your cultural blah, blah, blah. So he just, I don't know. I, I think when he vacates its space, maybe someone else can get um, a nice tenure track position there. So anyway, that's my rant. <laughs> OK, should we? Does anyone, let's open up uh, for questions from you guys. Does anyone have anything? Or I could just keep asking <laughs> questions. Well, we can think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I would love to hear, well, thank you both for being here. Um, I really enjoyed it. And thank you, Annalise, as well. Um, I would love to hear more about the publishing process for both your novels. What was it like for you both to navigate the world of publishing, which is often described as very corporate and very non-diverse? Um, and both uh, very diverse and you know, females. I may have had a different experience. Like I have been working on a project that involves writing about my family members, and it's sort of so personal and so close to me. I have a hard time sharing it with other people because it's my uh, it's my grandfather and it's my grandmother. Um, and if I had sent. Uh, something like that through the publishing process, I might have had a pretty different experience. Um, But uh, with this book, I mean, um, I was playing so much with genericness, right? And with America, with a capital A as this entity um, that I feel like everyone has a share in. Um, I felt like people have been able to connect with it on lots of different levels. And I've actually been really surprised by how many male readers have really connected with it, connected with it even though I think that uh, it's a work where I really wanted it to be like female experience at the forefront. Um, and with a particularity and with like uh, some of the stressors that I think are unique to our position. Um, but I guess I just, I found that publishing is full of great and really open-minded people. And um, even though my editor, first editor, has left, um, it's uh, it seems to me like a good world. It's a world full of people who love books. And whatever size the company is, um, it's still made up of book-loving people, as far as I can tell. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I used to work in book publishing um, before I, I um, like straight out of college, and I did that for a number of years. And I, I guess what that taught me was all the dumb things not to do. Like, um, I don't know how much it would ha- People could argue like, oh, because you work you know, for Random House, that's why you got public. But I, I don't think so, because it's still really hard. But just knowing what not to do, like don't write a dumb subject heading in your email, like be relevant, like know how to position. You have to know the, the you have to be in the trenches of writing something very long, for a long period of time, but then you have to have this ability to switch it off and then be like, ah, I'm gonna look at my book in an objective way to get your elevator pitch and all of that. So um, so when you have that down, um, that can help you in a way like as you're writing your agent query. So I, it's, for me, it was, the long process was the writing of the book and then um, the publishing process was actually pretty quick. I queried, you just do your research, you know, you look at books that are kind of, you would like to be in conversation with or authors that you feel like touch on similar themes. You know, find out who their their agents are. Um, you query them, you write a nice letter, first paragraph like saying all the wonderful things about their author and second paragraph saying all the wonderful things about yourself. And, um, and, and, and yeah, you get it out there and then, and then you don't know and then your agent then sends it to publishers. So um, I, I mean, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're like, books about it and, and um, blogs and essays. Uh, but for me, it was, yeah, that process was not too painful. Definitely the writing part and the editing and, and that was, was 
uh, more, yeah, it took a longer time. <laughs> I, I think maybe like two more things I believe about um, good things to do when you're somewhere in the middle of the publishing process is um, like it's easy to think about who the most prestigious author uh, editors are or who, what the most prestigious house is, but ultimately your relationship is going to be a personal relationship with someone. And like, uh, if that person really believes in your book, you know, um, on the same level that you believe in it, they think it's about what you think it's about, that's going to be more important than what title they have. Um, and also, uh, uh, it's nice to find an agent who um, just says, oh, this is great, let's send it out right now. But um, if you have an agent who wants to work with you on it, who says, like, I love this, um, but I also think that you could do this with it, like, that's someone who's already investing time in you, and um, they might be a better long-term partner because you'll have an extra reader, like something that you have less and less of once you leave your MFA program or wherever. It was really hard to sell my novel. That my friends were going to read the book. Yeah. And then I was like, you know, because I know what happens when I read somebody's book and I don't like it. And I'm like, oh, um, we're still friends. So it's a very dark and violent book. And I always knew it was going to be a hard sell, even though men write dark and violent shit all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but when women do so it, I went like, home and I, I knew that I had to do this. Like that I, in order to respect the reader, in order to respect myself, that I had to like do that same thing and, and look really hard at myself and think about what...